Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kidshanu bimitzvotav itivanu, laasuk bidevri Torah, vechaye rev na Adonai Eloheinu et devri Torah teka, befinu ufi amecha beit Yisrael, veni chaye enachnu, vetzed zenu vetzed a amecha beit Yisrael, kulanu yode shemecha, velomer Torah teka lishma. Baruch ata Adonai, Hamer Lamer, Torah, Lishmo Yisrael. Leamor Yisrael. Amen. <coughs> now English. Uh, blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us to engross ourselves in the words of Torah. Please, Adonai, our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouth into the mouth of all your people, the house of Israel. May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, all of us know your name and study your Torah for its own sake. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Amen. Amen. And the blessing for the Megillah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kidshanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu, al mikra Megillah. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, we, Rabbi, left off uh, last week in uh, Kohelet, which is the series that we are going through. So I'm going to begin with uh, chapter 2, verses 20, verse 24, and we'll go through uh, 317. It is not good for man that he eats and drinks and shows his soul satisfaction in his labor. Is it not good for man that he eats and drinks and shows his soul satisfaction in his labor? And even that, I perceived, it is from the hand of God. For who should eat and who should make haste except me? The, to the man who pleases him, he has given wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner, he has given the urge to gather and amass, that he may give it over to one who, please, who is pleasing to God. That too is futility and a vexation of the spirit." Everything has its season, and there is a time for everything under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot the planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to wreck, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to, to wail, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to shun embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to rend and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain then has the worker by his toil? I have observed the task which God has given the sons of man to be concerned with, he made everything beautiful in its time. He has also put an enigma into their minds so that th that man cannot comprehend what God has done from beginning to end. Thus, I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and do good in his life. Indeed, every man who eats and drinks and finds satisfaction in all his labor, this is a gift of God. I realize that whatever God has done will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be subtracted from it. And God has acted so that man should be in awe of him. What has been already exists and what is still to be has already been. And God always seeks the pursued. Furthermore, I have observed beneath the sun, in the place of justice, there is wickedness. And in the place of righteousness, there is wickedness. I mused. God will judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time for everything and every deed there. Amen. 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 I know I heard some of y'all humming out there that song, right? <laughs> it's called uh, Turn, Turn, Turn by the Birds, right? So all, those of you who are old enough remember that song. But uh, I had to ask my wife this morning, I was like, who is the band that sung that song? I need to know. And so she found it, and, and sure enough, they, they quote this whole section. In the song, that's what they that's what they read. So, but those are the lyrics. So, um, what I wanted to discuss today is seasons and destiny, because we are all living in a season right now, and I want to discuss seasons and destiny. And I'm going to toggle back between the micro and the macro, right? From the very small, minute seasons to the very large world 
type events. And because everything that, that we do affects everything else in our lives. Uh, there's some much smarter people here that, that understand this whole theory, and I'm just going to give you like the very quick, quick layman's term, the dumbed-down version, but it, there's uh, something called the string effect. And the string effect is that everything is attached in, in a single line to each other. And so one small thing here has an effect as it goes down the line, and it gets larger and larger and larger. So this is what I want to talk about. Um, verse three, uh, chapter 3, verse 1 says, Everything has its season, and there is a time for everything under heaven. When we think about... And the reason it's so important to think about the micro and the macro is because when we think about all the different people who are here today, all the different families, all the different individuals, and all the ones that will be from us and those who still will come in, think about your past. And it's funny because <laughs> this is almost to, to the, to the parasha a year ago that I stood up here. Uh, it was one, one week sooner so last year, Parsha Re'eh, I stood up here and I gave my testimony. Some of y'all may remember that. Um, <clears throat> but what was happening at that time in my life when I was thinking back on all this was I was thinking about all the events that led me up to that and led me through that. And then after that, that led me here. All, th all those events worked toward this place, towards this time in my life. And so... As we go throughout our day, and, and, and you, too, think back. Think back to, the, to what brought you here as a family, as an individual. Think about those things because they should not be lost on us. And I'm going to have more to say about that. And, and Hashem takes this very serious. And it'll make sense here in a minute uh, later on. But what I'm about to say now is, is the stories. I, I mean, we could fill a whole week's worth solid of just listening to the stories of all the different families and individuals who are here today and those who are yet to come. Uh, Rabbi, you know, he's uh, rightfully so is so excited about Lapid Judaism, and we all are, right? But Rabbi is going to be conducting some, uh, some interviews. He's going to be doing some short videos to, to uh, let the masses know what Lapid Judaism is all about. So he's going to be getting together with Mikael at Shalom Studios. <laughs> and not just Rabbi. He's going to call on some of, some of our gentlemen here who are just powerful men who have, who have been studying. Hashem has been preparing them for such a time as this. And women as well. And we were talking about this the other day, Rabbi, myself, and Zagan Rayford. Because Rabbi had made a comment that you know, he wants to do short interviews as well with individuals, couples, uh, singles, young people, because it's important for the world out there to see what brought us here. What attracted you to this? We know what brought us here, right? It means the Ruach HaKodesh. But again, think back. Hashem caused every micro event and season in our lives to lead us to this point. Not to mention, he gave us a, a character trait of emet, of truth. So that was already pl implanted within us. Everything out throughout life just led us to this. And now, Baruch Hashem, we're not on this winding path. We're on a straight path. And so it's important to know what Hashem expects from us at this point. Now, I know I'm, as Rabbi likes to say, preaching to the Levitical choir. <laughs> but, you know, we've got new people here. We've got visitors here today. And... Baruch Hashem, one day someone's going to be watching this video and they're going to be listening and hearing things for the first time. So some of these things I'm going to repeat, but hey, we're also in, uh, you know, Parasha Ekev and we're in Devarim and Moshe was doing the same thing, right? <laughs> and these are people who lived through it. And, and yet Moshe is going, okay, now we're going to go back and we're going to review everything. So um, with regard to seasons and times, can we affect our destiny? Do we believe in destiny? We should. I mean, because we're here and we have a destiny. We've always had destinies. And 
we can affect when that destiny will happen. Now, as we're going through a season, a season has a, has a duration and period, right? It has a beginning and an end. We don't know necessarily when it ends. Maybe, hopefully, we'll begin to recognize when those seasons begin. And there are also seasons within seasons. What do I mean by that? Well, we know that Hashem has created multiple worlds, right? right. And he's created worlds within worlds. And that's not so far-fetched because we, we remind ourselves every, every uh, counting of the Omer that we are not just a simple being, right? God has created this very complex, unique, dynamic people and, and makeups. And so when we count the Sephirot, you know, it's, it's not just a matter of, of counting and counting, you know, down and counting up and doing all this. It, it's a matter of connecting into that specific Sephirot within the Sephirots as well. Okay, so there is within the Sephirot of, of Chesed, there is a kingdom of strength. And within this kingdom of, of Yesod, foundation, there is a kingdom of Chesed. And it goes on and on. And then within, within this kingdom of Malchut, there's, there's this kingdom of wisdom and understanding. And so if you think if Hashem's going to, you know, he's the designer and the creator of all this, if he's going to cause things to happen, why not cause it to happen within us at different times, at different points, okay? And it is up for us to try to recognize these things. Uh, in, the, in the Talmud Sanhedrin 98a, the Gemara discusses a verse that refers to the redemption. I, Hashem, in its time, I will hasten it. And that's Isaiah 60, 22. Rabbi Alexandri said, Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi noted a contradiction. On the one hand, it is written, in its time, which implies that the redemption will occur in its preordained time. But on the other hand, it is written, I will hasten it, which implies that God will bring the redemption before it. It's preordained time. Which is it? Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi resolved this contradiction as follows. If the Jews are deserving, I will hasten it. If they are not deserving, the redemption will come in its time. Another contradiction posed by Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi. Rav Alexandri said, Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi noted a contradiction on the one hand, it is written, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a man, which implies that the Mashiach will come swiftly. But on the other hand, it is written, a humbled man riding on a donkey, which implies that the Mashiach will come sluggishly. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi resolved this contradiction as follows. If the Jews are deserving, the Messiah will, will arrive with the clouds of heaven. If they are not deserving, he will come as a humble man riding on a donkey. So we see that, uh, hinds you know, hindsight, so is 20, 20, right? So we can see now that they missed it, <laughs> so, so to speak, right? Okay, so, but here we are now, and so we can see that we do affect our destinies. That day is going to come. Whether we hit it or not is the question. Do we, do we bypass it? Do we go under it? Do we go over it? What are we doing? It all starts when the season begins. And I think, you know, it's amazing because Hashem started me down this course of learning some of these very particular things two months bef before Rabbi. I mean, he, he asked me a couple of weeks ago. And prior to that, Hashem had already started me down this uh, series of, 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 of understandings and learnings, right, in order to bring me here. You see what I'm saying? Hashem is always there. You know, I used to think back in the day, maybe some of you can relate. Hashem, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. Can I hear your voice? Oh, I would long to hear your voice. I don't know what I was expecting, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I would have fell out if I heard that. You know. but, but now I do. I do. I, on a, look. A lot, okay? <laughs> a lot. And what I mean by that is when you study his word, he begins to speak to you through his word. It is so amazing. God, Hashem will cause a question to come into your mind, and you're sitting there thinking about this question, 
and you're studying, and then boom, there it is, the answer to it. And, and Mishpacha, I'm sure there's a thousand, maybe a million examples of this sitting right here today. Y'all could get up and, and give the same testimony right here today. But it, it's amazing because sometimes, you know, it's, it's a day, two, three, that same week when all this happens. Sometimes it'll be from the radio. I kid you not. It, sometimes it'll be because, look, he controls everything. He is, Rabbi had said a couple of weeks ago in one of his uh, uh, Aliyah teachings that, you know, we've, we've always heard that Hashem is everywhere. And this is true. But really what it's saying is Hashem is everywhere, right? He is, that's him. Now you might say, well, wait, wait a minute, how can that be when, you know, somebody's committing this, this heinous crime and there's wars and all this? Look, Hashem gave us free will. Man chooses to do what he chooses to do. He can do what God asks him to do, or he can say no. And once he says no and he does his own thing, God is not in that place. He, is, he has removed himself from that situation. This is what brings evil. This is what causes evil. It's not, it's not uh, that the, the adversary, Has Shalom, has, has the power to override anything that Hashem has is, is put out there, right? It's, it's that we have made the, de the decision or the choice, not anyone here, not myself, ever, I hope. <laughs> but, but, have, but just notice that. Notice when in people's lives you see these things going on. It's not that Hashem's not there. He wants to be there. But they've said, no, I, I choose to do it my way, this way, and this is what causes the darkness to come in. Okay? So... <clears throat> We all have, have the power to do uh, more than I think we are fully aware of. And when I was get, getting back to my original thought was, this is so amazing because when, when Hashem started, started me down this uh, path of studying, you know, I had bought, like many of you, I'm, just, I'm, I'm addicted to buying study books now. <laughs> it's amazing. But... Uh, sometimes I'll get these books, and what happens is you're studying something, and it gives a reference to another set of teachings, right? So you go out and you purchase that, and you get it, and then you start studying that, and then it, it leads you to something else. Well, then you kind of put that aside, and then you grab the new one, and you start looking at that. Well, this is one of those times when I buy this book. You see how thick it is, and I haven't gotten very far into it. This is the one that Hashem brought me back to a couple of months ago, started back. And... Zagan Rayford and I had a, quest, or, or had a conversation about this, and so I started sharing with him. Turns out he did the same thing. He bought the book, and then he put it up. And so we started sharing some things out of this book, and, and it's just so amazing because it fits, and it ties right into what, what uh, Hashem would have me bring today. The other thing that's exciting is I believe this, ha this all began prior to last week, but last week it, it came to a fruition, this was a place that was just hearing all the good reports, right? Beginning with the births and beginning with, the, you know, the pregnancies and beginning with, you know, rabbis saying that we now have, you know, uh, legitimate uh, tax, you know, identification in New York and in Tulsa. And, and we are, you know, as I don't know if y'all recall this, but rabbi has uh, submitted uh, Lapid Judaism uh, to the U.S. Patent Office. Yes, wow. and so, and they've, they have dissected that. They're dissecting every part of that to make sure that no, it's not going to cross over into anyone else who might already have that, including the logo. I mean, and the logo, they're measuring heights and widths and colors and this and that. Okay, so be in prayer about that. I pray that this, this has not been taken yet, and then we'll move on forward with that. Uh, Rabbi just uh, forwarded a message to Zagan Rayford and I, an email, uh, that the, uh, all the things that needed to fall in place for beginning to make construction on the Shiloh, Mikvah Shiloh is one step closer. Amen. So they're saying probably within the next two to three weeks, maybe, we should be permitted. Baruch Hashem. Oh, my goodness. 
But Mishpachah, think of all those, you know, just as, as he met, you know, started out with, uh, in prayer about all the events that brought us to this place. And everyone here is important and an integral part of, of making that happen. You know, we've had some that, that uh, came and, and have left, and there's nothing negative to say about that. We just continue to pray that they will come, someday come back because they did play an integral part of that as well. So for whatever reason, they, they decided to uh, make an exit, but may Shem show them the, the, the on-ramp in the future. So getting back to uh, the seasons, destiny, Vaikra 26.21 says, If you behave casually with me and refuse to heed me, then I shall lay a blow upon you. Another way of, of saying that is, if you behave casually with me, then I will behave casually with you. What is Hashem talking about? Because <laughs> when I read that, I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I hope I never, and trust me, I, I have. And this is what so, um, you know, we, we have a fear of God, right? And, and it's not that. That scary fear, it's that awesomeness, that, that knowing who he is fear of Hashem. And when I read that, you know, I started digging into it. Is it that we put the things off that happen in our daily lives as just mere things that happen? Do we treat things that happen in our daily lives with a casualness? Do we say, oh, you know, you know, that... My computer didn't start today, and it's, I don't know what's wrong, and it won't boot up. You know, darn technology. Or do we, do we stop and say, Hashem, you are everywhere. You are everywhere. What is going on here? Let me pause for a moment. Let me pray. Let me bless you. Let me just thank you. Let me put some, some thought into this. Um, or, or do we just say casually? That's, it is what it is. I found this article on uh, uh, a website called uh, the he Hebrew Academy of Cleveland. And this was after I had kind of already started uh, gathering these things together. I found this and I was like, Baruch Hashem is perfect. It says, we persist in thinking or acting as if we think that all of Hashem's carefully and meticulously calibrated punishments are merely coincidental. In quotations, it says, things happen. When we act toward Hashem with casualness, he responds in turn by making it more difficult to understand the divine hand when things happen to us. This leads to Hester Panim, divine concealment, hiddenness of Hashem's countenance, making it harder for us to perceive the truth. Whoa. <laughs> you know, we, we know that Hashem has, has had to conceal himself, right? We, we, cannot, we cannot handle the light, the full light of Hashem, so that every level from Hashem down to this place called earth, there's a diminution of Hashem's brightness and his light and his holiness. And it does down like this, right? It is our job to find it out and, and to, to release it back unto Hashem, thereby creating a larger and much larger place for this light to come down. Proverbs 25.2 says, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Mishpucha, I would uh, suggest that after today, not just because I'm saying it, trust me. But after today, start looking at things in a different light. Okay, start trying to understand what is happening at this very moment in time. It is a season within a season. It is a world within a world, right? I mean, seasons, are, it's crazy because the, the world has seasons and we are created from the dust of the earth. So why should we not be affected by it? What's even crazier is the world, in the, the animal kingdom, and vegetation, and plants, animals, all, they know 
unfortunately, better than man how to react to the seasons. Okay? I mean, we are in a season right now of, of, of growth and harvest. And soon we'll be going into the fall winter, which is a season and a time of dormancy. The animals and the plants, they do the same thing. The animals go into hibernation. They don't procreate during the cold time, the cold uh, months. The plants, the, the seeds go into hibernation. Everything ceases, right? And it's a time of, it's a time of uh, dormancy. But not man. Man just goes on and goes on and goes on and, and pays really no mind to what's happening in our lives. And so you take that overarching, the macro, and then you put all the smaller ones within it. There's things happening all the time. And, and Mishpucha, you know, those of us who are married don't think that, that, and we know this already to be true, but what affects the one affects the other. And those of you who are still young enough to be with your parents, under your parents' roof, please know that what you do affects your parents, and vice versa, right? So, and think about it too, young people who have not yet had children. What you do today will someday affect your seed in the future. So think about what you do, and don't, don't just throw off everything casually, because again, Hashem says, you treat me with casualness, I will treat you with casualness. Um, back, to, back to my book. This is, a, this is a book that, instead of chapters, it talks about gates. What is it about gates and doors and levels that makes us just go, ooh. <laughs> There's something, uh, there's something mystical about it, right? Okay, so this is uh, the first gate, chapter 3. Ah, I thought y'all would never ask. I was like, well, maybe I don't want to know. Nefesh Ha Zim Zum. And it's Rabbi Chaim Volhozhin. Volhozhin. <laughs> I worked that out. So somebody's got it. So this one is titled, <clears throat> this section is entitled, Thought, Speech, and Action Create or Destroy Worlds. God created man in this analogous way, so to speak, in the image of Elohim, giving him continuous control over innumerable powers and worlds handing them over to him such that he commands and directs them according to his specific actions, speech, and thoughts, together with his behavior, whether positive or negative, God forbid. For with his positive actions, speech, and thoughts, he maintains and provides power to many supernal holy powers and worlds, adding holiness and light to them. As per... And I will place my words in your mouth to plant heavens and establish earth. That is from uh, Yeshayahu of 5116. And as per Chazal, don't call them my sons, but rather my builders. That's a uh, reference Berakot 64a. For they arrange the supernal worlds like a builder who arranges his construction and provides them with much power. And the opposite, God forbid, through his actions or speech and thoughts which are not positive, he immeasurably destroys, heaven should save us, countless powers and holy supernal worlds as per. And those that will annihilate and destroy you come from you. Oh, those thoughts, that speech, and that action, right here it says, and those that will annihilate and destroy you will come from you. That is Yeshayahu 49.17. Darkening or reducing their light and holiness, God forbid, and instead increasing the corresponding power in the chambers of impurity, heaven should save us. This is the meaning of Elohim created man in his image. In the image of Elohim, he created him. And for in the image of Elohim, he made man, 
Just as God is the Elohim, the one who empowers all existence in all of the worlds, arranging and controlling them all each moment as per his will. Similarly, God willed it that man is enabled to exert control such that he is the one who opens and closes a myriad of powers and worlds according to the detail of his behavior and all that he does at each and every moment. Wow. <laughs> it kind of makes you just want to go sit in a room and just be still. <laughs> Not really, but, but, you know, having said that, squirt. Having said that, um, hit baradut, which is personal prayer, which is uh, meditation. Don't let the world trick you because the, the world likes to take things and then, and then just twist them and, you know, just, just uh, treat them in a different, wrong way. But personal time, personal prayer, meditation, quietness, getting along with Hashem, this will help in those areas. But what I just read, Mishpucha, uh, should be something that makes you want to take pause throughout the day and think about what's going on. Uh, think about how what we do also affects others. <clears throat> this next section is uh, still in the first gateway, and this is in chapter 9. And this section is entitled, Further Emphasis that, that Man's Action Invokes God's Reaction. This is, and in quotations it says, with my mighty horses who battled with Pharaoh's riders, I revealed that you are my beloved. And that is Shir Hashirim 1.9. Meaning that just as with the horses of Pharaoh were in contrast, I'm sorry, just as the horses of Pharaoh were in contrast to the norm where the rider guides the horse, with Pharaoh and his army, the horse directed its rider as per Chazal. That comes from Shemot Rabbah Beshalach. What it's saying there is, and let me back up a second. Hey, have you ever thought during that whole scene of, of the Yam Suf, granted uh, Pharaoh and his army and, and all the Egyptians had seen the power of God, and by the way, this took a year, and I'm sure y'all know this, but again, people who are just now coming into this, this was not a, you know, a three-hour movie with intermission in between, right? <laughs> Bathroom break and a snack run, right? This, this happened over a course of a year's time, so they saw all of Hashem's power, and they witnessed it. And now here they are at the Yom Suf, the parting of the sea, and you would think that they would not want to go into that. Why would you want to go into that? You see that, the, that Hashem's nation is escaping. And why would you? Craziness. So I read in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in Shemot Rabbah Beshalach that Hashem caused the waves to appear as female horses, thereby drawing the horses of the Egyptians in. In fact, it says the lasciviousness of the riders drew them. So it was the horse controlling the rider. But we also hear that it says, and, and we read this all the time in, in, in our prayer, in, in our siddur, that he cast horde, horse and its rider into the sea. Well, it's talking singular here. So what, what is he saying? What he's referring to, and this is another interpretation of this very particular moment, Again, the waves being portrayed as, to the other side, looking like female horses, it was the Egyptians who were the horses, and they were drawn after them. The rider being the prince of Mitzrayim. He drowned the horse and its rider into the sea. So we see the power that Hashem has. Obviously, we know this, right? So it goes on to say, now getting back to... Thoughts, speech, and action. Similarly, I reveal that you are my beloved, and I am controlled by you, my beloved, literally in this way, that even though I am 
He who rides above the heavens, nevertheless, you, so to speak, guide me through your actions, in that my connection, so to speak, to the worlds is only according to the tendencies of your actions. As per he who rides across the heavens to help you, and similarly as per Chazal, our service fulfills the needs of the Most High. Again, let us, let us stop and think. Let us be cognizant of, of the things that we do, say, speech, actions. I used to think it, in the reversed way that it was thought was the lesser, speech the greater, and obviously action the, the most, you know, prolific. But as I read this, and as I continue to read this book, it says that thought is the most powerful of the three. And so it begins with that thought. Now, you might say, well, but I didn't speak anything and I didn't do it. Therefore, I'm kinda, you know, I kind of get to slide. Nope. No, 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 no. No. This has the more powerful effect. And Mishpukha, we do not want to tear down, right? Even with the thought. Hashem will bring instances he will bring circumstances. He will bring trials. He will bring tribulation. He will also bring judgment. He will bring punishment. What we do at that time, he'll bring them in the, in the, you know, in the event of uh, something happening to your vehicle. He will bring them by way of putting someone in your life, maybe that you don't necessarily get along with, uh, you know, different character traits, different personalities. Guess what? Hashem brought them to you. And vice versa, he brought you to them. What's happening? This is another season within a season, within a season. So we need to be cognizant. Um, it was funny because as I'm, as I'm going through this, I show up to work, walk in. I see my wonderful employee. She's not sitting out here today, but <laughs> say good morning to her. Go to my office, and I turn on my computer, and... This is why I brought up the computer situation. <laughs> it would not start. It just would not come up. And then once it does, everything's running super slow, 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 slow. And I'm like, what is going on? Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hashem. I'm not going to treat you with casualness. So I'm like, okay, I bless you. I don't know. I, you know, made this thing come online. Made everything work out properly. All of a sudden, here comes uh, my employee, John. And he walks in. I look at him. We say good morning. He goes, uh, the six-head machine is down. I said, What? It's like, yeah, the machine is down. I said, w w what's wrong? What do you mean? He said, I don't know. It was making all kinds of noises and threw up some codes. And so we called the technician. And he said, it's doing what? Don't, don't turn it back on. Don't turn it back on. I'm like, seriously? Okay, wait a minute. Slow down. <laughs> Hashem, what are, you, what are you teaching me here? What are you showing me? Right, exactly. just, just, just slow it down for a minute. And before the end of the day, now the machine didn't get fixed. Technician can't come out till Monday. So there's that. But as the day goes on, good news starts to come and replaces that negative situation. And I, I tell you what, by the end of the day, I was like, what machine? <laughs> what problem with what machine? What are you talking about? I have no clue what you're talking about. But anyway, so... But th this, these are the kinds of things that I think what Hashem is saying to us is we, we control because he created us in his image. We control our, our worlds, so to speak. We control what happens in our lives day to day. Um, we, we have something that we're excited about, Tulsa, Oklahoma, obviously. Yes, Baruch Hashem. This... Mishpucha, I think, is, is, you know, Hashem brought us to this season to be able to create a new season over here. But it wasn't until we were ready here that it was time for that to begin. Okay? It could not have done it. It could not have happened any sooner. Right? All in Hashem's timing. Same with the, the, the mikvah project. You know, we, we got frustrated over a little while, you know, and I'm sure everybody did. And, some, and after a while, you just kind of forget. It's like, you know, not top of mind anymore. And, you know, Rabbi was, you know, very frustrated at times. Uh, you know, I don't want to 
put words in his mouth and make it sound like, you know, he's wringing hands or anything like that. But, but you know, he, we're, we're ready to see some, some action, some movement on the project, right? Well, now it's happening, but it's in Hashem's timing. And so we just have to believe and know that we are doing what we are called to do, and Hashem's going to work out all the rest. So, Baruch Hashem, it's, it's, it's moving forward. Um, speaking about larger things, the macro uh, and seasons, Menachos 99b says the Torah, and, and this is going to go back to the Torah portion itself, the Torah was given in 40 days, and the soul is created in 40 days. The Baal HaTarim says this, and this has got to be exciting for the, for the mamas out here carrying. The Baal HaTarim says that the soul is given its form 40 days from the day of conception. Think about that. That's just, you know, sometimes you wish you could see from Hashem's view, you know, what, what does the forming of a soul look like? What, what does he do? What does he actually do when he forms a soul? And by the way, I also read in here, and I, I tried to find it. I promise you I did, but it was one of those things when I read it, and I was just like, uh, it, it gave a reference somewhere else, and then boom, there I go again. <laughs> so, and I, I came back to try to find it, and I couldn't. I probably should have called Zagan Rafer. He probably knows. But in here, it talks about how our souls are hewn out by Hashem. Hewn out from what? <laughs> okay. I mean, it doesn't matter to me because if Hashem's hewning, hewning our, our souls out from somewhere, it's all good, right? right, right. But, but what is it? What, is, it, is, it is it the walls it, or, or could it be the temple? Could it be the temple? Is this why it is so important for us to do everything that builds up and not tears down? Do we continue to tear down the temple or are we building it back up? And, and this is what the 40 days and the reason I bring this up. So let me finish this part. Thus, anyone who safeguards his Torah, his soul is safeguarded. And anyone who does not safeguard the Torah, his soul is not safeguarded. I found this interesting when it said his Torah. I mean, I get his soul, but what about his Torah? So as I looked into that, it explains that the Torah that you know, the Torah that I know, the Torah that he met knows in Rayford and, and Mazel and, and so on, the Torah that you know, do safeguard that. Don't forget it. Because we're not all on the same level, but we're all called to remember what we have learned. And as you recall and you safeguard that which you have learned, then Hashem safeguards your soul. And, and unfortunately, the, the vice versa is uh, true as well. So this brings us to the 40 days of Teshuvah, Baruch Hashem, which will begin next week. Well, a week from tomorrow. And so we know that how important Teshuvah is. And again, for those who are, who are new, for those who are still yet to come in, Teshuvah is basically repentance. Uh, the one word explanation is repentance. But teshuva is our way of returning to Hashem, uh, building our relationship with Hashem, receiving and, and holding on, making dear that covenant that we have with Hashem, right? And so we are going to enter a season of teshuva. Now, I believe personally, this is just my own personal opinion, but that the three weeks that we just came out of, was a catalyst yes. to things to come. Amen. And I believe, had not we done as well as we did, and only Hashem knows, but I would think that, I hope and pray that Hashem was approving, that this is what caused the other things to now start moving in, in a, at a pace and at a fashion. Okay? So we've got 40 days now, and it culminates with Yom Kippur. What, what an awesome time. What an awesome day. Not to mention that as individuals, again, do not treat Hashem with casualness. Not to mention that this is going to cause what your whole next year will look like. Destiny is before us. Destiny is there for each and every one of us. What we do today is going to determine whether we hit that mark or we just fly over it, underneath it. Boom, we missed it. That's why... It says that one day we will all know 
We will know it as we are known. We will all know what, what we missed. Isaiah 58, 12 uh, through 14, beginning with verse 12. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you, if you recall the Sabbath, I'm sorry, speak out. If you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and, do not, and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Yaakov. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. So here we are about to enter into a, a larger season. And I say larger because this is not just for us as individuals, but this is us for the entire nation of Israel. And think of the power that we, can, that we bring down by doing this, Mishpucha. And so by doing this, here we are, repairer of broken walls. Just think, if our, if our soul was hewn out from that, that holy temple, that place in heaven, in Shemayim, and we're now correcting and healing this, this stone, and we're rebuilding that temple there. How powerful of an effect is it going to have coming back down to us? Um, I just lost my train of thought, sorry. <laughs> we'll go. But so, so we, can see, we can see the power that we yield, just as I read here a moment ago from this book. By the way, it also, and I'm going to find this real quick. Bear with me. It was, uh, it's in the uh, first gateway, uh, chapter 20. Haven't gotten there yet, but when I saw this, I was like, I can't wait to get there. Repentance on each of three levels. On each of the three levels of our soul. The neshama, the ruach, uh, I'm sorry, on the, on the nefesh, ruach, and neshama. So there is the teaching here, and, and I can't wait to get into it, but how there is a level of healing on each of the three levels, and there's a, a, a way to repent for the actions done on each of the three levels. <clears throat> the reason I say that um, the macro is also important, we are, all, we are all brought here, as I started out, with the minis, the micros, leading us to here, but it was our destiny to have been brought here as individuals. It was our destiny to have left the teachings that we have learned, we once knew, the, the teachings that we were taught. It was our destiny to leave those. And by doing so, we are the ones who are freeing Yeshua from the trapped gates that where he now resides. What am I talking about? What are you talking about, Zagan? For those who are new. <laughs> Glad you asked. <laughs> a third teaching from Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi met the prophet Elijah, who was standing at the entrance of the, gate of the cave of Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi asked Elijah, Will I enter the world to come? Elijah answered him, If this Lord wishes it, Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi said, I saw two people, but I heard the voice of three. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi asked Elijah, When will the Messiah come? Elijah answered him, Go and ask the Messiah himself. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi asked, And where is he sitting? At the gate of the city. And this is none other than the gates of Rome. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi asked, And what is his distinguishing feature? Elijah responded, he is sitting among the paupers afflicted with disease. All of them untie and tie all their bandages at the same time, but he unties and ties bandages one by one. I might be, I might be needed at any moment, therefore I deal with my bandages in this way, so that I will not be delayed. Rav Yehoshua ben Levi went to the Messiah. He said to him, peace be upon you, my master and teacher. The Messiah said to Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi, Peace be upon you. 
son of Levi. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi asked him, when is master coming? The Messiah answered him, today. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi went back to Elijah, and Elijah asked him, what did he say to you? And Elijah and, uh, answered Elijah, and he said, peace be upon you, son of Levi. Elijah said to Ra Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi, he has assured you and your father that you are both destined to enter the world to come. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi then said to Elijah, he lied to me, for he said to me, I am coming today, and he has not come. And Elijah said to Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi, this is what he was saying to you today if you heed his voice. Today, Mishpucha, if we, do, if, if we not treat Hashem with casualness, he is one step closer to coming. Again, we are the ones who are building up. We are the ones who are, are creating. It is, I think, this is how important Lapid Judaism is because we are the ones who are making him become revealed. That's the power that we wield. I know it, it, it sounds... It sounds what it sounds like, you know? And uh, to some, it may sound crazy, but to us, not. It's not crazy. When we think about all that we can do to release Mashiach to the, to the world at large, and we are doing that. People are coming in more and more, and they're going to continue to come in more and more because of what we are doing then the more, revealed, the more revealed the Mashiach becomes. And then one day, our brothers and sisters are going are gonna to recognize. Keholet, uh, Keholet 3.3, a time to wreck and a time to build. This is what I was just talking about. This is another time, uh, another season, another place in our lives. And I think, it, uh, I think we get the message, Right? I think we get the message that we are all powerful. And don't, don't think that, you know, well, I, I don't have this position or that position or I don't get to do this or, or all these types of things. That's not true because young people, you know, young families, what you are doing, husbands and, and fathers and mothers, uh, husbands and wives, is, is you're pouring into your children. And one day your children will pour into their children. And then you have three-generation families here. And, and, and strengthening and building. This is the three chord. This is the three chord rope. Okay, it's not easily broken. Hasve shalom that it does. But I, I choose to believe that Hashem's word is true. Right? It, it is true. And so we know that um, we know that we're on the right path. So I'm just going to leave it with that. Uh, I do want to say that uh, we are excited. For Rabbi and Rebetzin. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, when I first came to Sar Shalom and, and uh, you know, had the opportunity to begin speaking to Rabbi, I was kind of like, you know, in, in awe of Rabbi. And I, and I still am. He, he's our Rabbi. But I never thought that I would have the opportunity to have the kind of conversations I have with him. It's wonderful. And, and we all do. You know, Rabbi is not one of these closed off, you know, you haven't, you haven't, you're not worthy, right? <laughs> you're not there yet. He's not. And, and so, but, but Hashem started this in Rabbi's heart all those years ago. And so we know how important this is to him on, on a personal level, I'm just saying. You know, we all have that desire. And, and so... You know, th this, is, uh, this is an exciting time for him and Reb Zin for all the hours and, and, and the, the tears and the prayers they put up, right? I thought about doing part two <laughs> from last year, but no. No, I, I have to keep the French thing going, right, in, that, in Rabbi's absence. But uh, Ms. Bukha, I just want to thank for all of you that, that had kind words to say and all the prayers this week and today. Uh, even the teasing, <laughs> even the teasing, because it made me laugh. So it, it kind of lightened things up. But, but is, it is truly an honor to be here and to serve as, as one of your Zagans. I promise you that. Um, yeah. 
And trust me, I, I don't take this uh, position lightly. I don't take this opportunity lightly. Uh, and when it comes up again, I'll probably react just the same way. I won't be able to find the prayer <laughs> or whatever. But, uh, but anyway, I just want to say that, you know, we, we'll close with the words that we know are true. And we say it with confidence, with full assurance that, that we are a part of making this happen. So, Baruch haba Bashem Adonai. Amen. Da da da.